So this video in the Evidences series is going to talk about LIDAR, which is Laser Imaging Detection and Ranging. And it's recently been deployed in a fascinating area of the world, down in northern Guatemala. And there was a program that National Geographic ran on February 6, 2018. It was called The Lost Treasure of the Mayan Snake Kings. And had the teaser for this uh, show, it said, See how LIDAR is revolutionizing archaeology and rewriting history. This went viral in many different media outlets. The National Geographic story was, was uh, billed as, or entitled as exclusive. Laser scans reveal Maya megalopolis below Guatemalan jungle. The BBC said, Sprawling Maya network discovered under Guatemalan jungle. The Washington Post said, Maya civilization was much vaster than known. Thousands of newly discovered structures reveal. NPR said, Game changer. Maya cities unearthed in Guatemala forests using lasers. The New York Times said, Lasers reveal a Maya civilization so dense it blew experts' minds. Fox said, Mysterious lost Maya cities discovered in Guatemalan jungle. So it's a pretty, pretty exciting program. I highly suggest going and watch it online. I'll put it in the resources section. I'm going to use some resources from uh, Book of Mormon Resources blog that did a great job in pulling together a lot of uh, scriptural ties from the Book of Mormon. So now, respected archaeologists, because of this, are actually comparing the Maya to the ancient Chinese and the ancient Egyptians. Um, the, the way that LIDAR works is it's expensive equipment that flies over in a, in a grid-like pattern over these jungle areas, and they send billions of laser beams down, and it uh, penetrates through the jungle canopy, and it bounces off the structures, and it forms this massive amount of data, so it's a huge data cloud. And now with supercomputers and graphic uh, processing, they can create these 3D map images. So much of this, LiDAR's been around for a while, but much of this technology is now integrated with it to be able to do these things. They've picked this specific area as a fantastic place to, to apply the technology. In fact, they've talked about um, LIDAR to archaeology as like the Hubble telescope is to astronomy. And this specific area, in fact, it's fascinating when you watch the program because they'll show you these just as far as the eye can see, jungle. And then they show you what it looks like underneath there from the LIDAR detection systems. And they discovered these vast, massive cities uh, under, underneath. So they, this specific area was a great target because many areas of the world have been urbanized or have had uh, modern farms, things that have, have destroyed much of the archeology span that was there. This area, the, with the Mayan collapse, uh, really was preserved as the jungles took over, essentially, and hid and protected a lot of the structures underneath uh, these jungles. Now this specific study was done over an area of about 2,100 square kilometers and they're going to continue going until they do about 5,000 square kilometers which will only be about 1.4 percent of the Mayan area uh, in Mesoamerica. Uh, the Mayan area is about the size of Montana roughly. So the, it's going to take decades really to study a lot of these things, but big picture uh, items are starting to emerge. And archaeologists have started talking a lot about these different things. And so pulling all these resources together I mentioned before, I put together six major categories that would be really fun to look at what the archaeologists have said uh, or in the program that was on National Geographic, and then specific references to the Book of Mormon. And as I mentioned, there's some great resources on the Book of Mormon resources blog uh, on this topic. So first of all, highly advanced civilization. Uh, my civilizations, so in yellow on the screen, this is what the archaeologists have said. Underneath it are the uh, scripture quotes for the Book of Mormon. So Maya civilization, much more dense, complex, and advanced than previous, previously thought. Jerem 1.8 says the people multiplied exceedingly, spread upon the face of the land, became exceedingly rich, employed fine workmanship, built buildings and machinery, worked metals, made tools of every kind, and crafted weapons of war. Helaman 3, 14 and 15 adds that they built ships, temples, synagogues, and sanctuaries, and offered many books and many records of every kind. Okay, another archaeologist, we have always known that the Maya were the most advanced civilization in the ancient Americas. Now we know that they were one of the most advanced in all the ancient world. 
The Lord promised Jared and his brother that their seed in the new world would become, quote, a great nation, and that there would be, quote, none greater upon all the face of the earth, Ether 143. Okay, the next category is massive population size. So archaeologists said Maya lowland population at the apex could have reached 15 to 20 million. That's why they're considering it one of the greatest civilizations possibly now uh, in the history of the world. Uh, Mormon 1.7 says the people in the land southward were as numerous almost as it were the sand of the sea. Uh, Archaeology said lot, land use was intensive, nearing 100% in many areas. Mormon 1 says the whole face of the land had become covered with buildings. Tikal was three or four times larger than we thought. Previous population estimates were 60,000 at apex. That number should now be 250,000 or more. El Palomar was 40 times larger than we realized. The Maya created vast urban sprawl. In many places, the Book of Mormon text mentions large populations, numerous people, Mosiah 24.3, so many people, 35.5a. Okay, archaeologists, estimates of population in the Maya area at, at apex have been revised upward to about 20 million. This was half the population of Europe at the time, even though the Maya occupied only one-thirtieth as much land area as Europe. Mormon described the Lamanites as numerous hosts in Alma 5127. 65,000 previously unknown structures just in this 2100 uh, square kilometer area that they started with. Mosiah 27.6 speaks of large cities and villages in all quarters of the land. Okay, next category, road networks. The archaeologists said vast networks of highways elevated. Notice the word elevated. Uh, so, that function, so they function even in the rainy season. This one really blew my mind. 35.6.8 terminology is many highways cast up and many roads made. Um, next archaeologists, Maya cities were more interconnected with transportation infrastructure than anyone realized. 35.6.8 describes many highways cast up, many roads made, which led from city to city, from land to land, and from place to place. Um, then the next, we used to think of Maya cities as isolated. They were, not, uh, they were not isolated. Networks of roads and highways connected them over vast distances. One is reminded of the roads and highways mentioned in 35.8.13. Okay, next category, large-scale agriculture. Food production was at an industrial scale. Helaman 612 mentions raising grain in abundance, many flocks and herds, and many fatlings. Agricultural production was on the astonishing scale with many wetlands drained and turned into irrigation fields. Helaman 12.2 explicitly mentions agriculture as pros prospering in the increase of their fields. Uh, public works, including dikes, dams, canals, ditches, and reservoirs. In some cases, my engineers rerouted natural stream flows. Uh, Mormon, in describing the Nephi Golden Age in the land southward, mentions widespread engineering and construction works. Alma 50.12, which includes ditches. Alma 49.22. Agricultural terraces with irrigation systems. Alma 17.26 and 27 describes a des uh, designated Lamanite place of water. Animal pens, Alma 129, says the Nephites had an abundance of flocks and herds and fatlings of every kind. Okay, next category, prevalent warfare. So ubiquitous fortresses, ramparts, and defensive walls. Alma 49.13 mentions forces of security for every city and all the land roundabout. Alma 49.18 emphasizes the high, highness of the bank, which had been thrown up, and the depth of the ditch, which had been dug roundabout. Um, Mormon 50, uh, 4 through 6, calls Captain Moroni's fortifications, towers, and strongholds. Alma 52, 6 describes Tiancum preparing defenses by casting up walls, roundabout, and preparing places of resort. Endemic warfare over centuries was the norm. Uh, Mormon 8, uh, Moroni uh, 400 AD said the Lamanites are at war one with another, and the whole face of the land is one continual round of murder and bloodshed, and no one knows at the end of the war. Warfare was particularly pre pre prevalent in the early classic, 250 to 500. And if you know the, the ending of the Book of Mormon, uh, wrote, Moroni wrote that their wars are exceedingly fierce among themselves. In the last, there were more, much more war among the Maya than we have ever supposed. Defensive structures and fortifications were everywhere. Tikal had a large fortress protecting it. Um, the Nephites strengthened so many cities, all of which are strongly fortified after the manner of the fortifications of Moroni. Alma 405127. And the last category was disaster-prone landscapes. Uh, archaeologists said many people lived on marginal swampy lands. Helaman 1120 uses the terminology waste places. 49519 uh, speaks of cities sunk in water. Uh, there was an earthwork wall 
surrounding Tikal 5 meters high and 16 kilometers long. Archaeologists have begun calling it the Great Wall of Tikal. The Book of Mormon describes a strong wall of timbers and earth to an exceeding height in Alma 53.4, encircling Bountiful with similar earthworks surrounding Gid, Alma 55, 25, and 26. And last, stone quarries, Alma 48.8, lists banks of earth and walls of stone as structural components. I know that was a lot of stuff, very quickly. Hopefully you found that very fascinating and very interesting. Uh, subscribe for more videos.